Well, owning a house is supposed to shore up your retirement, but an increasing number of ageing Australians are struggling to pay off their mortgages. Business reporter Rachel Clayton has been digging into the data and she joins us now in the studio. Good morning, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. How are you? Great to see you. We know it's becoming harder for first home buyers to even just get into the market, but what do we know about older Australians who are struggling? So I've come across some really interesting data. The first is from the census, which shows over the past 20 years, so since the year 2000, the number of 55 to 64 year olds that are able to, uh, that ha sorry, that are owning their home outright, mm. so when they're reaching retirement, has halved. So half the number of older Australians are entering that retirement age owning a home. The other half are really, they've still got quite a high mortgage. Uh, and the ABC has also obtained data from this rolling survey of 52,000 Australians, and I'll reel off a couple of stats from that. So the number of 55 to 65 year olds who planned to retire but then changed their minds has doubled in the past year. Mm. Probably not surprising given the high cost of living and how high interest rates um, have gotten. Postponed retirements are most common in Victoria and New South Wales. Uh, and the average loan balance for this group rose by 6%. But concerningly, more than half plan to either sell their home or raid their superannuation to pay down their house. And that's really concerning because superannuation wasn't created for people to pay off their mortgages. It was created so that people can have a comfortable life in retirement. And when we see um, when more people are, are going towards their, their super to, to pay down their home, it means that more people are going to be reliant on the pension. Uh, and with more people on the pension, that just puts a lot of pressure on the federal government's coffers. One of the main reasons that this is happening when I've been talking to financial analysts it's because of the bank of mum and dad. And it's, it's a common thing now that if your parents have got the ability to help you buy a house, to help younger people get that deposit, they're going, they're going to help you. But how they're doing that is they're drawing down on the equity of their home. Mm -hmm. So when they're getting quite close to paying off that mortgage and retiring, owning their home outright, suddenly their kids are like, hey, can you help me out? They do do that, but it means that they have this larger mortgage that they're having to pay off. So that's happening right now with retirees. And then if we look on the other side of the spectrum, young people buying houses later. So I spoke to um, some people at Lendy, which is Aussie Home Loans, and they've got a bunch of data too. The average age that they're seeing first home buyers get into the market is now 37. Uh, that's probably also going to get older. We have 30 year home loans. If you do the math, you're at 67 when yeah. you pay that off. But if those people also help out their children get um, their first home, home loan, uh, then we're going to see people really pushing maybe into their 70s when they still haven't paid off. Yeah, home. just doing the cold hard maths as you yeah. say. So what are the possible solutions? Well, a bit ironically, um, house prices for some people really need to stay high because if you're about to retire and you either want to downsize um, to pay off that mortgage, it means you're going to have to sell your house at a price where you can pay off your debt and buy another home that's smaller outright. If house prices drop, that becomes very hard and then you have a generation of retirees who are really, really stuck. Uh, I spoke to financial analyst Martin North about this a little earlier, so check out what he had to say. Most people don't go from fully working to fully retiring now. So what we are seeing is a more gentle gradation into retirement. And I would suggest that maybe there's an opportunity to think about how you flex that and how you perhaps allow people to work more hours and still get access to the pension and those sorts of things. So rather than just uh, a holus bozus move in the in, in a sort of the cliff age, I think there's an opportunity to restructure some of those things and actually help people into, into retirement. And, you know, there are already some incentives for down traders who actually, um, you know, sell and get into a smaller property. I think governments should be thinking about that too and linking it back to the retirement age. So some really interesting suggestions there. What has been the response to some of those ideas from the federal government? Well, the federal government's aware that it's happening. They had an intergenerational report that was published last year um, that said the government was a bit worried about the financial risk that was coming with the number of people that were retiring without owning their home outright. But there hasn't been any moves from the government to really address that yet. Mm. Fascinating analysis. It's really interesting to think of it from that end because we're obviously always yeah. talking about people getting into the market. Exactly. So, yeah, thanks so much, Rachel. Yeah, it's a bit thanks, of a mess. Rich. It is a mess. <laughs> it's like a kind way of describing it. That uh, sums up the housing crisis in yeah. one word, doesn't it? Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.